You're welcome to the DTU studio. Dear friends, in today's episode of Rubaru, I bring you face to face with Professor Jitendra Jeet Andy Gupta, Director of Integrated Enterprise Lab, President, Decision Sciences Institute, Professor, College of Business at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Professor Jitendra Jeet, first of all, let me ask you. You have a big name, not only in the field of research, in the field you're working in, but also you got two names, Jitendra Jeet, and then you have Andy Gupta. Uh, what is it? How is it? Well, I think uh, this is interesting. You know, I, I tell you the story. Yeah. Uh, my name, actually, when I, when I was born, was Jeet. Okay, uh, was, that was, was a pet name. That was the pet name, Jeet. Jeet. So when my father went to admit me to the school, and I used to be the person in my family who used to cry that I want to go to school because my older brothers and sisters were going to school. I was too young. I couldn't be admitted to school, but I was crying all the time to go to school and all that. And there was a national hero at that time who was killed by the name Jitendra Nath Das Gupta. Oh, okay. So, my father, when he went to admit me to the school, named me Jitendra Nath Das Gupta. Okay, so that's how I got the name. Uh, but uh, my friends and everybody uh, called me Jeet, and the family they called me Jeet. Professionally, everybody called me Professor J N D Gupta. When I was a student here in in New Delhi Polytechnic. I used to write J N Das Gupta, okay. so everybody thought that I'm a Bengali, and I <laughs> did not know any Bengali. I was actually born in Punjab and grew up in Delhi. I mean, I speak Punjabi and Hindi, but no, no Bengali. When people started speaking me in Bengali, and I had to tell them, no, I do not know Bengali. They said, oh, so you are a Bengali who grew up in the north? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not a Bengali. I'm a Punjabi, and that didn't go well. So when I got out of Delhi Polytechnic, I changed from writing J N Das Gupta to J N D Gupta, and that's how I came to know in the J N D Gupta. All my earlier papers are published in that name, J N D Gupta. So when I went to USA, I had to adopt a nickname because for them it was difficult to pronounce Jitendra Gupta. So <laughs> I said, okay, why don't you call me Jeet? That's my nickname. So that's how I became Jeet. So after a few years. I returned to India, and uh, Professor Prem Vrath, uh, director of IIT Roorkee, and I was a pro vice, ch 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 pro vice chancellor, no vice chancellor of the Uttar Pradesh Technological University, yeah, and he is a junior colleague of mine from IIT Kharagpur. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I came to India, and uh, people asked me. So I wrote my name, Jeet Gupta, on my name tag. Mm -hmm. So there was this person, I think he was a student, who said, Sir, do you know Professor J. N. D. Gupta? I would like to meet Professor J. N. D. Gupta. So I said, So I am Professor J. N. D. Gupta. What would you like to talk about? No, 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 sir. <laughs> I want to meet Professor J. N. D. Gupta. I said, Okay, so let me see if I can find him. So I went to Professor Premrath and I said, Professor, what do I do now? <laughs> I mean, he said, they said, he laughed, he said, you know, you have created a problem for yourself. Now you have created two people from one. <laughs> one Jeet Gupta, one J N D Gupta. So that's when I started writing Jatinder in the parenthesis. Now I write Jeet as my nickname so that people know that it's the same person. That's fantastic. Uh, you passed out in 1964. Yes. And then again, you had a, you have a story regarding 1964 batch. Yes. Being I mean, a 1964 actually, batch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you asked me that, you know, actually I've got two stories for that. One is that we are sort of a unique batch from that time, that because of the Indochina war at that time, we were asked to shorten our third year of studies, we so we not have the six months of the practical training that we have in the third year, and have the exam earlier and then say do the practical training afterward to satisfy the requirements to get our degree. So our exam was held mm -hmm. in uh, November of 1963, even though we were awarded the degree later on in 64, but we got our provisional certificates uh, either in December of 
2013 or the January of 2014, mm -hmm. and we went to work after that at that time. So this is one story that I know of. I mean, you know, I mean <laughs> the way it is. The second is that when I visited the uh, Delhi College of Engineering for the Delhi Technological University here in uh, Rohini, mm -hmm. and uh, the principal was uh, showing me the uh, the the book of the alumni, and mm -hmm. I said, you know, th he said, your name is not in this book, so are you an alumni of that? So I said, yes, sir, I am. Mm -hmm. So I said, can I see the book? And he said, yeah, here's your copy. And I found out my whole batch was missing. <laughs> that all the emergency batch was not there. There was a 63 batch which passed in regular 63. Then there was a 64 batch which passed after us. That was the Delhi College of Engineering batch, mm -hmm. not the last batch of Delhi Polytechnic. Mm -hmm. So this is another interesting story interesting. from that time, from my time. And uh, I laugh at these stories, but I do <laughs> cite these stories to people and say, okay, you know, and maybe that's the reason why my becoming an alumni at that time is not reflected in the alumni uh, records. Yes, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. Then uh, you passed out in 64, like the story mm -hmm. you uh, narrated. Mm -hmm. And after passing out, uh, you immediately shifted to US? No, actually I worked. I mean, I, after, I, after I did the degree from here, I joined uh, what is known as the, I don't know whether it still exists or not, it's a government organization called the National Projects Construction Corporation, okay, NPCC. Okay. Uh, we have National yeah. Building Construction. Now we have a okay. NBCC, okay. National okay. Building Construction So this was uh, well. headquartered in Defense Colony at that time. Okay. And uh, they had projects all over the country. Okay. So I joined as an assistant executive engineer at that time, and I was uh, uh, placed in uh, Durgapur for the construction of the Durgapur thermal power station. Okay. So I worked there and uh, under the guidance of the superintending engineer who was very able and very much of a mentoring kind of a person. I was very fortunate mm -hmm. to have him there. He taught me the ropes, although he made me mad sev several times and I got angry at him mm -hmm. and all that. But uh, he taught me a lot of things. And that's where my interest grew in higher education. Okay. That all the work that I was doing, I did the work on costing, I did the work on reinforcement, I did the work on structures. I found out that I didn't know that much and that I need to learn. So I resigned from my job and I went to the IIT Kharagpur and did my master's in industrial engineering. Okay, so after passing out from here and then doing your job, yeah. uh, then you joined IIT Kharagpur. IIT Kharagpur and did my master's from <coughs> there and I did my master's in industrial engineering. Uh, because I was interested in uh, some of the managerial aspects and uh, some of the quantitative aspects in the operations research field. So that's what I did. And uh, after that, I thought about the careers, whether I want to go to the industry or whether I want to go to the academia. And I had decided at that stage that uh, the first career that I want after that is the academic career because I got interested in research and there were professors at IIT Kharagpur who reinforced me the need for research in this field. So I got quite interested in research and in fact I wrote a couple of papers even when I was a master's student. So I was going to join IIT Delhi as a faculty member and uh, being interested in research I also was very much interested in collaborating with people and talking to people across the world. I used to write a lot of letters to a lot of people about uh, their research and how it came about and what is the direction to follow and so all of that. So you're continuing to have a passion yes. for reading and yes. research. Yes. So you kept on reading right. and then you kept on sending your views uh, about yes. it. And uh, one of the professors and I entered into an argument through the, and by the way, in those times we didn't have emails, we didn't have anything, we had regular yeah. letters, yeah. we had to wait for quite a few days to get the mail. So you would have to that. send a letter, it would go yes. by shipping and yes. then take around yes. a month or 15 days. Yeah, to get a reply and all of that. So this professor was the one who finally convinced me in some way or the other by his letters asking me what I want to do, what am I doing and all that to pursue a PhD under him at his university. So I went to USA to do a PhD instead of joining the IIT Delhi. That's how it turned out. and. That's how I went to USA. You know, so. And uh, then you had your views on his paper and uh, yes. <laughs> it was to his dislike. <laughs> well, of course it was to dislike because <laughs> nobody likes to be told that you are wrong. That you are wrong. <laughs> and he was wrong and being an engineer I was taught there is only one right answer. <laughs> so I mean he was wrong and I was right. So 
but we argued quite a bit even after we went to US yeah. but he did not accept until somebody else wrote a, wrote a letter thing saying he's wrong and yeah, right. that's the way he, he wrote an errata after that to the journal that's fine that's yeah. fine. So. then you uh, how did you decide to finally settle in US that was your option uh, that was uh, one of your or uh, you had uh, alternates and you wanted to do something else well actually I when I went to US I did not have any intention of staying in U.S. The only reason I accepted his offer to go to U.S. was to do a Ph.D. in industrial engineering. And okay. at that time, there was no institution in India that offered, offered, that offered the degree, Ph.D. degree in industrial engineering. The, the highest degree they offered was a master's, and I only got a master's mm -hmm. at that time. But I, was al I always wanted to come back after I did the Ph.D., and uh, I did apply for several positions to come back to India at that time. Uh, so, but it didn't materialize. It didn't materialize. So then I joined uh, one of the academic positions uh, in uh, USA. And uh, I was going to stay for a few years and see Okay, then you started your career as a teacher? Yes, right. as an assistant professor. As an assistant professor. Yes, yeah, so, so I was doing the research and uh, fortunately or unfortunately in the couple of years my name became known in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, for the research that I did and published in some of the better journals and uh, all of that. So one thing led to the other and opportunities in India didn't materialize. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stay in U.S. And uh, decision sciences, uh, f if it is an integrated field and it is a field... Uh, yes, uh, yeah. <coughs> and I joined that institution way back in 69 after I did my Ph.D. I was doing my first job. That's when the institute started. Uh, I, I think it was established somewhere around 68, 69 yes. only. Yes, so I'm one of the early members of that Early institute. members of the DC uh, yes. Institute. And I continued uh, that one all the way through. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, I mean, you know, in life has a way of, you know, I mean, people say you plan for life. I can lie about it and tell you that I planned for it. I don't think I planned for it. I think it is event driven. Something mm -hmm. happened. Something resulted from it, something again happened, something resulted from it, and that's the way my career has been. You know, been. there's a very interesting story, like yeah. uh, you didn't want to stay back permanently in U.S., mm -hmm. and you wanted an offer or a job yes. in India, yes. and you tried and you didn't get it. That's right. And when you got an offer, uh, it was an offer, blind offer, it blind was offer. a blind offer you got, and then you didn't want to, reason is, you know, uh, there is a very interesting story about Khalil Gibran. There is a poetry, mm -hmm. The Prophet. Yeah. In Prophet, he, what happens is the shirag, uh, shipwreck happens. Mm -hmm. And when he he always wants to go back, go back, go back. And finally, he feels uh, he, he doesn't need to come back. Mm -hmm. or, and when he has decided that he will not go back, then suddenly uh, his people come and uh, they beckon him to mm -hmm. go back and he refuses yeah. to yeah. he refuses to because by that time his people start loving him yeah. but yeah. then that that's sort of a story it yeah. is you know? well i don't think i can claim that much in my case you know <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I think in my case it was a uh, maybe a comedy of errors or whatever you say yeah that uh, <laughs> i had applied for a position i didn't even get an acknowledgement to that so i have joined the institution and out of nowhere one night I thought about why not I give the same opportunity to my brothers and sisters to bring them to US and get them educated mm -hmm. and that's what I started doing so by the time that offer came four and a half years later I was already at a second university and uh, both of my brothers mm -hmm. were already in US and uh, my parents were visiting me at that time and I was already on the way to bring my sisters to US and I said, there is no way at this time I can leave them alone here in the U.S. and go back to India. That's very so true. So that's the way it turned out. And one thing led to the other. Mm -hmm. And I spent awful lot of time. And I'm proud of the fact that my family members are doing much better, mm -hmm. both professionally as well as monetarily uh, in their lives than I am. A stage hoti hai. आपके अपने लोग आपके लिए बहुत जरूरी होते हैं। Yes, they are the most yeah. important people. Yeah. I was telling the students, you know, even though we are in engineering and we are in hardcore hard science, we think we are, there is only one best answer. There is one answer that is it. 
we got to remember the most important aspect in the organizations is the people. It's the people. If we don't relate to the people, if we don't care for the people, and if we don't believe in that, then we are not doing anything. And this is not something we can fake. This is not something we can say, okay. no, I care for you when you don't. You've got to develop a genuine interest in people okay. and their well-being. Yeah. Are you connected to the alumni association <sighs> or whatever? Because now, um, as far as DTU is concerned, we have a thrust area mm -hmm. and we want to create an international yeah. umbrella alumni organization. Yeah. So uh, are you connected some way in the past? I joined the alumni association. In fact, I didn't have the money to pay the dues. One of my friends paid the dues for me because I already left by that time, mm -hmm. uh, gone to uh, Durgapur. Okay. So he paid the dues and he remembers coming to Kashmiri Gate, paying the dues. And in fact, he said he must have a receipt somewhere too. And also, I think the Alumni Association uh, can gain by yeah. writing about me, oh and yeah. telling the other students what they can achieve. What they can achieve. I've been fortunate in that. It's not something that I designed for. It is not something I can say that I deserved, but that's the way it turned that's out. That's the way it is. Sir. Yeah. So, so uh, because you have made a name in research, mm -hmm. and uh, you are a known persona uh, internationally, and uh, you are president also of the uh, Decision Sciences um, Institute, uh, which is a very very prestigious mm -hmm. institution. Would you want to say something about uh, your research journey? Well, you know, research is something you do out of interest. Out of interest. I think uh, one of the things that I tell my students about research is don't get into research because you think you have some kind of a duty to do research. Mm -hmm. Don't get to the research if you think that somebody is forcing you to solve a problem. Okay. First and the foremost, you got to be interested in research, in discovering something new. The, the kick that you get out of discovering something new, whether it is a methodology, whether it is a design, or whether it is a, a solution approach, or whatever, mm -hmm. if you don't have within you as a desire to do the research, don't get into that. I so I got that into that, you know, yeah. when I was doing my master's, I got that. I mean, somehow or the other, I discovered that that's what satisfies me. So I, sp I will spend nights not sleeping and reading and writing about it and discovering and proving things. So that's what continued with me. And I've been fortunate to work with people from all over the world. I mean, uh, I have co collaborators from China, from uh, Germany, from France, from Taiwan, from Japan from uh, Spain, from South America, from uh, USA, obviously, and, 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 and even India, you know. In fact, I was just going to, in my next question, I was going to ask you about any message for our students, but this, there couldn't have been a better message mm -hmm. than this, which you have conveyed uh, yeah. through uh, research. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you like to give a, a, any message to uh, the DTU organization? I think like uh, many other institutions, when they become large, uh, DTU has become from the Delhi College of Engineering to a DTU and, included in and made the School of Management and this and that and all that and created many more departments. I think it has fragmented itself. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that DTU should think about is coming up with some strategies by which they can break the silos of the departments and start thinking about the holistic approach to education rather than thinking about electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, or computer engineering, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And think holistically what is the best way we can serve the people and how we can have these interactions going between the departments to promote that. So I'm, I'm not saying as a criticism, but I'm saying as a constructive thing for us to think about breaking the silos and seeing how we can approach this holistically. The second thing I do think that DTU should uh, develop global perspectives and 
have global partnerships and invite the people uh, from outside the countries, whether be they Indians or not Indians, but Indians mostly get, are willing to come and all that, and enrich the students by the experiences that these people have gained abroad mm -hmm. as part of their curriculum, not just extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. but as a part of the curriculum. This course that uh, I taught at uh, Chandigarh in the Indian School of Business, I was invited to do that. I kept on saying no, but they insisted that I go come and teach that course, was in that sense. There, more than half of the courses are taught by the visiting faculty from different countries. We have already made a policy regarding Very this, and uh, we have, uh, the DTU has already decided uh, to have more faculty from Very abroad, uh, yeah. whether visiting Indians yeah. or uh, yeah. others. Uh, to have them on a contract basis uh, or for a course basis yeah. and uh, we are already on, on that track good. we are doing it in good. fact so so that's what i and nice. uh, same thing about research research, research. collaborations you know so, because i've tried to approach several people in research collaboration here and uh, nothing has materialized here so far but I, i'm pretty sure sometimes it will materialize yeah, I'm, a, I'm an optimist Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank yeah. you, Professor Gupta, uh, for being with us yeah. and uh, for visiting uh, Delhi Technological University, alma mater, for again. And uh, I again I extend an invitation to you to be back again. And uh, yes, you will surely get some formal invitations from the uh, uh, your organization. Mm -hmm. And um, we all love it. We love okay. students. We have best of the students. I yes. tell you, our youngsters are too good mm -hmm. and they'll carry your yeah, flag. I, I do know. They'll carry do know your that. flag. I don't have any doubt in that. They'll, no, they'll so. surely carry But I was flag. not even a best student and I made it, so they can make it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>